Hello everyone and welcome to the first Icona chat. So I know everyone's been anticipating this quite a lot since I finished the game on Twitch and had been recently just uploading all the recordings onto YouTube. So let's get right into it with the Axiom Verge review. So first thing I want to talk about is the beginning of the game kind of just drops you off in the middle of nowhere. You're not really sure what's going on. So so while there is a lot of mystery in this game going on, I feel like there's a very lack of storyline. But when there is storyline, it's very forced. Like you run into a part where they give you some storyline, but they just throw a lot at you. They try to like it's kind of overwhelming. So there's very little storyline, but when there is storyline, they kind of just throw a ton of things at you all at, all at once. They don't really let you process anything. So, with the gameplay, it's very, very simple. So there's a lot of just, like, you kind of just have to aim your gun. <laughs> um, speaking of guns, there's always there's a very wide variety of guns, but for everyone who's watched a lot of my gameplay by now, you know that all I've done really is use number three, which was the short range electric gun. I found that the best one, just because it went through platforms, it did a lot of damage, and like, you never really needed to be out of range when you were fighting. So I've always stuck with one weapon. So like, they gave you this huge variety, but they made that one, and maybe like, Maybe like one or two others very strong to the point where you didn't need to bother with any of other guns. So it opened up a lot of different ways to play the game. But when they give you this like one weapon that just solves everything most times, that's the weapon you're going to go with. So speaking of most times, most of the monsters are very simple. So like as I've as I just said, like you only need the one gun for most of the game. Just to go through everything. Most of the monsters, they're very simple. They will have, like, patterns you can figure out. And the AI wasn't very good. Like, it would constantly get stuck in the weird places that would just let me kill them very easily. So, like, there's always just, like... There's a lack of threat a lot of the times. Because if you just get them stuck in the right place or get the right pattern, it's very simple. Now, for the bosses... The bosses, you guys probably heard me complain about a couple bosses. Um, there was the third boss I had a lot of trouble with, and the second to last boss, the kind of drone thing. Um, before I would figure out a pattern or find a place where they couldn't really hit me, I definitely had a lot of trouble. But then once I found like where it was safe to to go, what what to do, things like that. The bosses did become very, 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 very simple. Um, to the point where like I may get hit one time through the whole fight. Um, so it kind of did like. It took a while to finally find like safe points or like, just like a just like a safe zone to just kill them. And once I did find that, it just took takes all the challenge out of the fight. So, like, there's just... It becomes a very boring fight and just figuring out, like, how long it's going to take for their dead. Like, with the third boss, I want... I did die a lot. A lot. But once I found that safe space at the top, I took out every single weapon on that monster and just destroyed it. Um, but something else I want to talk about is the puzzle solving in the game. Like, it the game doesn't hold your hand, but to an extent where it did become pretty bad. So, something I want to talk about is there's a lot of things in the game where it's very situational. Like, you could use the, um, I'm just going to call it the glitch gun because I can't remember the name of it. Like, you could use the glitch gun on, like, one room where there's, like, that pink chemical water. Almost never before, well, actually never before, 
would that pink water be turned into a platform. But in one single room, on one single space, it would be turned into a platform. You had no way of knowing that. Um, the way I figured it out was I realized I really had no way of getting from from like this lower area to a farther up area. And I just, I kind of just improvised. It's like, maybe I turned the monsters into something? I had no idea. And happened to turn the water into a platform. But nowhere else in the game was that a thing. So, um, they really give you no explanation. They don't really say anything. Um, there's never, never something that kind of just guides you a bit. Like, I'm not asking for them to tell you, Oh, now you need to go here. Oh, now you need to do this. I'm asking, like, a tiny bit of guidance would not have been bad. You guys know, may have noticed that almost all my runs, once I had access to every location, I would go back to the first area and just make my way through over and over and over again, trying to find something new. And that's really how I beat the game, just, just going over and over everything. Um... There was a lot to explore in the game. I definitely want... I give them that much. There was definitely a lot. But, um... I really can't complain about how much exploration the game provided. But what I can complain about is the lack of information that you're ever given. Like, maybe once in a while when you get when you get a weapon and it tells you that's how the weapon works. You're like, oh, so this is how I can do this. This is how I can do that. But, like, like, let's talk about the hookshot for a moment. The hookshot, there's a pit, and if you don't know where the hookshot is in that pit, once you're at the bottom of this pit, you have no way of getting out. If you don't have the hookshot with you, you have to restart your save file. Um, which, it's not bad, but it's very inconvenient. So, what it was was... You had to cross the pit, shoot a drone into this tiny space, hope that it <laughs> it gets in that space, and that's where the hookshot was. And then the hookshot itself is very painful and very annoying to use. I did not like the hookshot, and I did not like that pit. Getting out of that pit was just very tedious. It took many, 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 many attempts before I could actually get out of it. It took up like a good 20 minutes of the stream that it was in. So there is... The developer... I say there is only one... There's one man who developed the game. He designed the whole game by himself. So, um... I can't be too harsh on, the, on it, because I guess, like... he I suppose he did have criticism, but... He didn't have a team telling him, like... This might not be the best idea... But it seems like he had a lot of ideas and kind of just, instead of just like taking some things out, he kind of just mashed everything together. Um, which was, I don't want to say it's the best idea, but like, it definitely added variety and let the game stand out, but not a whole lot. So where the game did stand out was, I want to say the music, but even that's, even that's kind of forgettable at this point. Um, the only music I really remember was, I think it was Kerr. It was like that music where you could hear like actual vocals going on and had like a very creepy tone to it. But other than that, the, the music, why it was very... You could listen to it and enjoy it, but after going from area to area, it kind of all sounds the same. And it's not that memorable. So, like, that... It just wasn't... It was good while it wasn't good. If... I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So... What else is there to talk about, really? So, things that they did right was... I don't want to sound mean by not knowing what to say about what the game did right. I, it had a challenge, it had a challenge to it. That was a good thing. Like, it wasn't overbearing, and it wasn't constantly like, 
oh, you're dead, oh, you did this wrong, you're dead, um, things like that. It was like, if, if you do stupid things, then yeah, you're gonna die. Like, the game was very forgiving, very, very, like, this game was very forgiving, like, the fact that there were save points everywhere, and you could just heal off the save points, like, you could exit rooms without having to kill everything. There's just a lot that the game did that was very forgiving. It let you make mistakes. It acknowledged that you're a person. It was very good. It was a very good thing that the game did. Um, but again, it wasn't very handhold. Like, I don't want to say I wanted it to be handholding, but, like, I wanted it to guide you at least tiny bit a tiny bit just so like you had an idea of where you were going so like you wouldn't come to this area and be like oh is this where I'm supposed to be right now like that was definitely an issue but um other than that the game the game did all right it like I said it was challenging it stood out the way it stood out was mainly the glitched areas and the glitch gun kind of like repairing the world. I like that. That was very cool. Um, but speaking of sp standing out, none of the areas actually stand out. Like, keep in mind this game was very based off Metroid. And in Metroid, the game did a lot of storytelling just with the environments alone. It had very memorable environments in most games. With this, like, there was the red area in the beginning... There was, there was, um, Kerr. There was the green area that you, like, used to travel back and forth. Um. What else was there? There was the area where, um, Athedos was. I can't very much remember any of the other areas, because they're not memorable. They're not really that, like, nothing really stood out. Um, but I still want to give this game, like, a 7 out of 10, just because of how much I enjoyed it in the end. Like, it kept me going. I don't know what exactly kept me going. The challenge of the game. I enjoyed exploring it. I definitely did. I enjoyed getting new items and checking out places I couldn't go to before. Like, that was very exciting for me. I always enjoyed finding something I couldn't go to before. I love that so much in the game. Um, I didn't like how easy the enemies were. Like I said before, I didn't like how the AI would kind of like stick itself in weird places. Um, there was a couple annoying ones, like mainly just the robots with the lasers. They definitely provided a tiny bit of challenge, but once you just got a tiny bit stronger, you could overcome that. And then once the at the point where you get the red coat and you can just phase through everything, that that was broken. I could kill pretty much everything just with the red coat. I barely had problems once I got that. Like the game constantly had to one up itself. It constantly had to be like, here's this new powerful upgrade. Now here's this new powerful monster. Now here's another new powerful upgrade. It was constantly trying to outperform itself when it could have, like, it could have given you your variety without overdoing itself, without trying to outperform itself, and still be creative and interesting. So, like I said, it's a 7 out of 10. I bought it on Steam for $10 during the Steam sale. It, so, if you're looking to play this game, it's definitely worth picking up. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm not going to say it's worth the $20, that's that's a normal price, but if you see it on sale, definitely check it out. So, that's going to be the end of the Icon Chat. All the videos are uploaded. I'm going to be doing another Icon Chat soon to announce the new game I'll be playing, and some new future updates with the channel. So, until next time, guys.